Hey there guys, it's Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. I am currently working on the next part of my great backyard cleanup series. Uh, and part of the job is to deal with this large old air conditioner. Now it's been lying out in the weather for a long, long time. It came from a place where the guy used to do a bit of refrigeration work and it has no gas in it. I wouldn't have taken it otherwise. There's actually another one under there as well. So I thought rather than just scrap it out as part of the cleanup series, I might as well do a separate video on this because some of you might be wondering how much value is in these things. Uh, so as we normally do with my scrap videos, we'll give you a few different sort of options as to how far you want to scrap it down and what the final value is of each stage is worth. Now, as usual, um, always consider selling stuff first. So if you get an old air conditioner that still operates, you're going to get more value for it than, um, than scrapping it out. And of course, the other thing is if you do scrap it out and it has got gas in it, you're going to have to factor in costs of having it degassed, which probably makes it not viable. Uh, you certainly can't just put a hacksaw through a copper pipe and let the gas go. It's just not very environmentally responsible. So generally, I don't pick these things up. Same with refrigerators and freezers. But uh, the opportunity came to grab these things and they've been lying around my yard for a long time. So let's see what value we can get out of an old air conditioner. Now the first stage, I'm going to weigh the thing as it is. So I've got a board across some old bathroom scales. It'll give me a reasonably accurate idea. And I'll tip it up onto there and see if I can work out what the thing weighs. Well, that was a bit awkward, but I managed to lift it up uh, on an angle. So it rested on the board. I have uh, adjusted the scales for the board. Not that that weighs a lot. And I could read the scales once I had it sort of balanced there. Close enough anyway, and we got to 90 kilos. So it's a fairly heavy little piece. Well, it's actually large. Um, good size electric motor, some good copper aluminium radiators. Uh, if we took that to the scrapyard just as dirty steel, as dirty pressing steel, uh, I don't know. You'd have to check with your scrapyard if they actually take them because of the gas issues. But they should if you can demonstrate that there's no gas in it. So at 90 kilos, we're looking at around about $9 just to take that in straight as it is. I reckon we can get much better value, but it depends how long it takes us to take it apart. So I'll start pulling it apart. I don't need to video all this. I'll time myself and we'll check back in in stages and see how we're going. As usual, let's break out the old notepad and keep a track of our options here. So dirty steel, 90 kilos approximately. We're working on around about 10 cents a kilo for dirty steel. It's going to fluctuate, depends where you're from and at what stage you're watching this video. Uh, $9. The only other thing we can add there is the cord, the power cord. Very easy to snip off. Quite a heavy duty one. Um, I'm just going to estimate around about 20 cents. It's usually anywhere between 10 and 30 cents for a power cord. Plug has to be cut off it, but they're so easy to grab that really there's barely no labour. So... $9.20 if we took that to the scrapyard as it is, assuming you could convince them to take take it with the uh, the gas issues. So let's start scrapping a bit further. So it was only a couple of minutes to get the covers off. For those of you who haven't seen inside an air conditioner before, there is um, obviously a bit of wiring because there's controls at the front. But you also have a large compressor which pumps the gas around the unit similar to a freezer or a fridge and there's quite a lot of copper pipe associated with that look at the corrosion in that so probably lost its gas long ago if it wasn't removed properly um, there's a solenoid valve which is going to have copper in it the two main radiators as such which are like a heat transfer thing are usually aluminium with copper pipes so there's one at the front and one at the back and they're quite large but they are contaminated with steel so we'll have to look at purifying those further down the uh, in this video um, more copper pipes uh, there's copper pipes running through that insulation material we're going to generate a little bit of rubbish but most of the weight is in that large compressor there's also a big electric motor in there that drives the fan and there's lots of um, just steel and the framework so it's going to take a little while to get apart it was only five minutes to get to this stage um, but I'll round up some tools and uh, 
I'm not going to be too gentle and we'll knock it apart as quick as we can just to get the main components for this stage of the video. Perhaps we'll start by cutting out the wiring loom. Now to get good price for our wire we don't want any plugs on it. I'm not going to unplug anything, I'm just going to cut the wire off neat at the back of the terminals. Get as much wire as we can and once we get that out of the road we can start taking some bits out. So I've got a little bit further here. Uh, I should mention with electrical items, most uh, large machinery uh, or appliances have large capacitors in them which can hold a charge. So always put a screwdriver across the terminals. Um, if it's been used recently, this machine here hasn't been used for, well, God knows, it's been in my backyard for 10 years. So there's not going to be any issues there. But it's a good habit to get into just a shorter screwdriver across the terminals in case there is a charge in the capacitors. Um, they're really of no value, um, they're actually plastic ones, some of them are in aluminium cans but there's really no value scrap wise for them. Uh, so we've got the little control panel off which I won't take apart any further at this stage, we'll just have a pile for dirty steel uh, but we'll micro scrap a little bit further later and see if we can get any value out of it. So we're pretty well just up to the stage of cutting a few of the pipes. Now these compressors are steel. And the scrapyards do buy them because they've got an electric motor inside. Uh, I've seen guys do videos on cutting them open to uh, try and rescue the copper or at least the motor. Uh, to my mind that's just a dirty job that's not really worth the effort. Uh, I'll just be selling it and I'll price it as a compressor. Uh, so there's copper pipes going into it. Um, so we'll hacksaw those off next to the body to get the best value of copper we can. And we'll start opening this thing up a bit more. I believe I may have just said hacksaw. Well, you certainly can because copper is very soft, but it's often awkward to get into these spots. And why hacksaw when we've got one of these little babies? And now I've rolled it over. It's gradually getting a bit lighter but uh, that big heavy compressor is still in there. So I've got to take a few more panels off and then these screws along the sides of this radiator. Same with the other side and we should have both the radiators off now that all the copper pipes are cut. And uh, we shall then check back in and once we have the major components removed. So I've stopped scrapping the main piece now and I've still got the compressor in there and the electric motor. But I thought, well, we'll stop with the best value stuff out of it, which is the two radiators. Uh, we have a little bit of clean steel, and we have our copper pipe, and a bit of wire. So we'll weigh it up now and give you a total at this stage, because this is relatively quick. It only took half an hour get, to get to this stage, whereas it's a fair bit more fiddling to get those things out for not a lot of extra value. So I've weighed that, what's left there, and it weighs out at about 60 kilos. Um, that would go as dirty steel again, so that's about six dollars. Uh, but we can't weigh these other ones up yet because we do need to take these tin sections off. So that's a bit of work, but it's worth it because there's a reasonably good can return. Well, at least you'll see um, the return we get, and I guess you make up your own mind whether it's worth it. So at this stage of the scrap out, we've got six dollars for the dirty steel. I haven't weighed up the clean steel. We'll probably only a couple of dollars here, if that, probably only one dollar. Uh, we have to do a little bit more work on those before we weigh them, and then we'll weigh up our various grades of copper and copper wire. And uh, we'll get a total at this stage with about half an hour's work, although we do have to add a bit more time to those. Just before we get the notepad out again, we do need to clean these up. Um, now we've got to cut the ends off these to get rid of that steel, and they're still both ends. The mounting brackets which is galvanized steel. Uh, I'm going to use a hacksaw and cut just down the inside and then we can uh, lever these copper loops off the end. Uh, hacksaw is a bit slow and tedious but it's the only thing I've got here at the moment. Um, some people use a reciprocating saw like called a sawzall which work really well they're nice and quick or if you had a large enough angle grinder with a, a disc that can go through that much or even if you do half each side it would certainly be much quicker but uh, we do need to get those bits of steel out and this last piece with the solenoid on it has quite a lot of copper and I'm just going to use the grinder and cut the contaminated metal off that 
So we'll get those two done and then we can weigh up at this stage. Just a note about the limitations of a hacksaw. It actually cuts through very quickly if you've got a good blade, but obviously you're limited to the amount of space um, between the blade and the frame. Uh, but if you do all four corners, you're really only left with a couple of loops in the middle. And now that I've cut through this section, I should be able to lever these loops off and then the frame will, will slip in far enough to get the center out. So look, it's not ideal, it's not the quickest way, but if you don't have the equipment, it's certainly a good option. You may have noticed the dripping. Um, the radiators do contain some compressor oil, as does a lot of the copper pipes. So put a towel down to soak it up if you don't want to contaminate your soil. Now, it cut through okay, but I'm not going to lie to you, it wasn't easy, it was a bit fiddly, especially on this long one, because I had a large section in the middle that I couldn't really get to, uh, and I had to bend the brackets a fair bit to get to them to cut them off, so it did take a while with a hacksaw, it's certainly not ideal. If you were doing quite a few of these, you'd you'd certainly have to invest in something to, to do it quickly, and I've seen some videos on guys using a sawzall, and it's pretty well just you know 10 seconds, and you just zip down it. So it'd be worth having a tool like that if you're doing a few of these, but at least I've shown you that you can do it. Now it took me about half an hour to clean everything up, so that's an hour total for this lot, remembering that you would be able to do it quicker without the hacksaw option. Uh, the little um, solenoid valve came off okay. I just cut these bits off with the grinder. There was a metal bracket on there I ground off, which actually shows that that's brass. Uh, copper pipes I've cut off, and it doesn't matter if you put things in your brass bin that have copper because brass is an alloy of copper anyway, and it's actually upgrading the quality of the load. The problem though with this bit is that a magnet test shows that there's still some sort of steel inside, and it's not worth cutting it open. Likewise, this bit I got off the end of the solenoid, that bit, this bit has a piece of steel one end. So they'll just go in the bin for dirty brass. I won't allow any dollars for those because dirty brass doesn't pay very well. These other bits here have solder joins in them so they'll just go in as what I call domestic copper as does all the loops that we chopped off now one end of them all had joins which are soldered the other ends were all fairly clean now you could possibly get away with putting them in the cleaner grade of copper uh, I'm not going to worry for the amount that's here and also they're, they're sort of oily they've got that compressor all over them so they're not exactly a clean sample so that'll go in with domestic, we'll weigh that up in a tick, as does this pile. There were a couple of nice clean pipes that could go uh, as a better grade of copper. Now it depends where you're from, it might be called um, number one copper or clean, bright and shiny I think they used to call it when I was doing scrap years ago. Uh, perhaps Milbury, I'm not sure. But whatever, you'll know what grade it is in your area, but they're nice and clean, there's no corrosion, there's no solder, whereas the rest of it, is corroded and there's joins and and whatnot so we'll weigh these up now and we'll get back to our notepad we'll start with our insulated copper wire now I've included the main cord here we allowed 20 cents for that earlier but there was some fairly heavy duty internal wiring now that added up to around about 400 grams and insulated copper wire is paying around 250 a kilo at the moment so look we'll allow a dollar for all that working nice round figures so we'll drop that on the notepad. All right, so cord or and or wire. Uh, we said around about a dollar. Now the copper itself, uh, I decided it's not worth weighing up these two cleaner bits separately just for the purposes of this, uh, this weigh up. It won't make a huge amount of difference. Uh, number two copper or domestic coppers, I don't know, I'm guessing around $6 a kilo and the uh, number one's probably seven, so there's not a lot of difference. We'll work on, we'll be conservative, we'll work on $6 a kilo for the lot. And we're just over two kilos. So our copper will be, two kilos, will be $12. And now moving on to our clean copper aluminium radiators. I'll have to do them separately. This one's almost six kilos. And this one's a bit larger. We've got six and a half kilos. So that's 12 and a half. Let's call it 12, 12 kilos. And the latest price I had on these, which was just this week, 
is $3.40 a kilo. So let's write that down. We've got copper alley radiators. And we're going 12 kilos to be conservative at $3.40. It works out at just over $40. So you can see that they're really worth spending the time to get out. And the only other from this stage of a scrapping is a little bit more clean steel that came off the end of the radiators. I said earlier I'm not mentioning those things, they, they're just incidentals, only a few cents here and there. So we had a bit of clean steel, which I did estimate earlier at about a dollar, I think. We won't even allow any extra for this lot. So just our clean steel. Here's a dollar, and that gives us a total of six, seven, nineteen, fifty-nine, sixty dollars. Now it took me an extra hour for this slot, one hour. However, as mentioned, you'd do it a lot quicker with a sawzall to cut those radiators down. But even at one full hour, we've gone from nine dollars twenty up to sixty. So that's well worth the effort. Um, pretty good return excellent return really uh, now we're going to do a third stage we'll get the compressor out we'll get the electric motor out which will reduce our dirty steel down even lower and we'll also do a little bit of micro scrapping so we'll get to that now so let's turn our attention back to the remaining components in the uh, main frame the Look, it depends if you've got the right tools. Um, it makes a huge difference. If you, if you were to muck around with a little shifter, trying to undo those nuts that are rather rusted, and then you've got to put your arm on extremely weird angles to get down to those ones, and you can only turn a quarter of a turn at a time, you're really pushing it uphill. It's, it's hard yakker, and it's really not worth the effort. But if you've got the right tools, it's actually pretty quick. Um, I've just got to a 3.8 drive ratchet here with a few extensions the right size socket and I've already just cracked these and they undid really easily so it's only going to take me a couple of minutes to get that compressor out and the motor should be similar except I do have to get the fans off which can be a bit of a problem but again if we uh, look at it you know have the right tools or either hit it with a grinder quickly so we're not mucking around uh, it's probably worthwhile so We'll see if we can turn this $6 dirty steel piece into a little bit better value in hopefully a relatively short amount of time. trickiest part of this was to get the fan off the back of the motor there's a little grub screw down there between the um, the fins there and I've managed to get it out and I've sprayed a bit of uh, lube in there so hopefully we can belt the motor through now that the nuts are undone Now at this stage of the scrap, I'm not taking any more off this frame. It's pretty well just dirty pressing steel. I'm not going to try and clean up the sort of the foam insulation and there's a heating element there and a few little bits of plastic. And there was a plastic shroud that went round the fan. Uh, it's not worth trying to get that into down to clean steel because there's so much work involved. So that one weighs out at 20 kilos plus this other panel we put on top as well. Uh, 20 kilos if you're going to take that in as dirty steel is about two dollars uh, and the clean steel I've got on the out little bathroom scales here is five kilos of the clean steel um, which is uh, around about a dollar at 20 cents a kilo so we'll put that aside and we'll weigh up the motor and the compressor now and see what they weigh the compressor weighs out at pretty well spot on 30 kilos so that's a certainly heavy compressor um, it's got a, a oil pump and an electric motor inside it and a reservoir for the oil so they do weigh quite heavy but this is a bit heavier than the average and the electric motor looks like about six kilos for that one 
So the next stage of this scrap out took about 15 minutes, which wasn't too bad really. I guess if, um, if you factor in spending time searching in your messy shed for the right tools, it probably took a bit longer, but I guess that's a lesson for all of us to have a neater shed and you're much more efficient. But anyway, as far as doing the job, another 15 minutes. Now, we reduced our dirty steel down to 20 kilos because obviously we took the heaviest things out of it. So that's down to two dollars from that one was six. The rest of this is all going to be the same. So as above, that would be 54. And then our compressor weighed 30 kilos. Now, a price I got through just recently was 60 cents a kilo for compressors, which is excellent. The price of copper has gone up a bit and it's reflecting in all these other things. So 30 kilos at 60 cents is $18. That's not bad for one compressor. And the electric motor weighed about six kilos. And they're actually paying 70 cents a kilo, which is high as I've actually heard it for a while. I think I better cash in all my electric motors. If we just scan over there. I've got lots of them in milk crates. A lot of weight in there. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Back to the maths. Six kilos at 70 cents. We'll call it $4. So that adds up to 56, 66, 74, $78. So we've increased $18 for 15 minutes. I reckon it's worth going to that step as well. So you can see there's pretty good value in these air compressors, uh, sorry, air conditioners, uh, especially the large ones. This wasn't just your small in the window one. This was a big size uh, air conditioner. Uh, now the only other thing would probably normally stop there, but I might just micro scrap a few of the little switches and things. Uh, it's not going to really be worth it, but it depends what you're looking for. And I'm collecting silver contacts at the moment so we'll see what's in some of the switches all right so the final part of this video i've moved inside now so my sound quality has probably changed a bit it's um, almost starting to rain outside and it's got a bit gloomy so i've just scrapped out a couple of the switches and controls and that's a tub of all the screws that i saved that weren't overly rusty when i pulled the thing apart there was one rocker switch that i'm going to keep and a little bit of um clean steel there just from the switches I also got a all the brass contacts uh, terminals they had to cut off all the wires or earlier you saw me just trimming the wires off the backs of these well I pulled them all off plus a few bits of brass out of the switches um, it's worth putting together um, you've got to put it somewhere and it's might as well go in my tubs rather than in the bin uh, 65 odd grams brass is paying around about five dollars a kilo so that's going to equate to just a bit over 20 cents. So, you know, you wouldn't necessarily do this just for the brass, but because I'm pulling these apart for other things, um, yes, we might as well put that in our brass tub, another 20 cents. Now, the thing that I was chasing is I'm trying to stock up these silver contacts. Most old switches, or just about every switch has a contact, and I'll do a separate video on these down the track. Uh, but at this stage I'm just accumulating and I would like to eventually um, refine them into pure silver and make my aim is to make a one kilo bar of pure silver. Now I've got a fair few of these in a jar already so we'll do a separate video on that down the track. Uh, dollar wise that really doesn't amount to much there but we will get more bits of brass off that. So I just enjoy pulling these little things apart. It's something I do in the morning when I have a coffee and uh, you know, it's kind of relaxing. And a lot of you I know scrap in front of the telly or YouTube. Um, if I'm watching one of E-Waste Ben's two-hour marathon scrapping videos, uh, it's kind of nice to be doing something while you're sort of half listening, half watching. So I won't write down anything extra for this. It took me about, I don't know, probably 15 minutes. Um, so I'm not worried about the value for that. It's just something kind of enjoyable to do. But let's look at the sums to finalise this video. If we had to scrap the thing just for dirty steel straight up, even saving the, saving the cord, we're not even 10 bucks. But look at the value we can get for really not a lot of time. Um, you may remember that we could have shortened that a lot with the right tools by cutting those radiators down. Uh, the 15 minutes there 
is, is was quite achievable. It's very easy to do. So if you've got the right tools available, it's not that difficult. And if something hasn't been lying around getting rusty in your yard for 10 years, it would come apart even easier. So really, we could probably surmise that back to an hour to uh, really make almost $70. Now, in anyone's language, that's not bad dollars. Uh, the radiators are good value, as you see. So they stack up nicely. So when you get a load of those, it'd be a good paying load. Copper's always good. So, you know, for the amount of space it takes up, you can get pretty good value there. The wire, not a great deal individually, but when you're doing a lot of things, it's amazing how quickly the tubs of wire do pile up. And the compressors and electric motors are paying well these days. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this scrapping adventure. If you do get a chance to come across large air conditioners, as long as there's no gas issues, I would suggest grab them. Very good. Thanks for watching. Look out for me in the next video.